I'm going to halt you there, Robert Buckland, because you have brought us uh, rather well onto our second question, which comes from Vincent Roberts. Vincent. Hello. Uh, is violent disorder and arson only half as bad as conspiring to stop the M25? <laughs> It's as, if you, it's as if you knew. Um, just a bit of context for those who might not know the full details here. So we know that in July last month, there were five Just Stop Oil activists who organised the protests that brought part of the M25 to a standstill. They were jailed, and they were jailed for four or five years. And you were clearly, Vincent, comparing that to some of the sentence that we've seen initially oh. handed down to some of those who took part in this violent disorder. So Vincent asks, is that only half as bad as conspiring to stop the M25? Robert Buckman. Well, well, first of all, Vincent, what you've got to remember is that the Just Stop Oil uh, case was after a trial where the defendants exercised, the, exercised their right to contest the allegations and had a full trial. And that meant, it is true, it, it, meant, it, it meant that after the trial was, was held, there was no credit that the court could give for any guilty pleas. What we're seeing, of course, with these more rapid cases this week is that, and there are some that are pleading not guilty, as we just heard on the news, but the ones who are pleading guilty are being dealt with rapidly and they are getting uh, as the system allows some credit for uh, an early guilty plea and therefore it's diff you, you, you're comparing apples with pears with respect with regard to the precise cases the point that i was making earlier is i think however a very strong one that the law should never discriminate between people uh, and their perceived political motive they should look instead at the overall criminality and uh, the the culpability the blameworthiness and then the the harm that is caused to people. And I think that in all the cases that I'm seeing, both this week and indeed that particular case that you've talked about, I think that the law was applied properly. It was a, it's not a day too long, as far as I'm concerned. And I think it's important that we don't make that sort of discrimination uh, between perceived political viewpoints. OK. Uh, Vicky Spratt, do you agree with that? I don't think that a peaceful protest, and by the way, I'm not saying that trying to shut down the M25 is not dangerous, it is, but there's a broader point here about peaceful protest, which is not comparable to burning down a library or trying to incite arson. <laughs> or trying to incite arson on a hotel that is housing asylum seekers, which could cause loss of life. Shutting down the M25 could also cause loss of life. But I think we have to be really clear about what we've seen in the last two weeks. It is absolutely disgusting, it's violent, it's dangerous, and it is not comparable in any way to peaceful protest. And this is not about freedom of speech in any way. This is about trying to hurt people and destroy buildings. I mean, clearly there are always going to be specific circumstances in any two court cases or trials that make a very direct comparison mm -hmm. difficult. But given the context, the framework that Vincent set out in his question, Dan Norris, what do you think? Well, look, I, I trained, as you mentioned, uh, I was trained by the NSPCC in child protection. I've seen some of the worst criminals that there absolutely are. And let me tell you that crimes like arson are deeply serious and, and, and you know, wholly unacceptable in any society. But there is no comparison to what the protesters were doing on that motorway, I have to say. Uh, I think they were punished far too severely. I'm with Charlie Faulkner on this. Um, now, I, I perfectly understand the huge irritation and distress that was caused by some of those actions, how it put people out. It is hugely annoying. Uh, I would share that annoyance if I'd have been delayed as well. But what I do think is we have to recognize sometimes that people make principled peaceful process, protests, even if it's very annoying, the impact that they cause on others. And if you are like me, you believe the evidence is overwhelming that there is a climate emergency. And if we don't act very, very quickly, and maybe it's already too late, if we don't act, then we are gonna be in real trouble and the consequences will make even our Arson and other crimes seem like nothing. So, so we, we, we do need to think and revisit this and get a proper proportion on it. Robert Buckland, I, you I, wanted to come back. I, I do, I, and I respect Dan in many ways, but I'm a bit surprised to hear that 
uh, bearing in mind the full extent of actually what happened with the Just Stop Oil case. It wasn't just inconvenience. There were life-changing things that happened to people as a result. Oh, it is true. It's what the judge... I've read the sentencing remarks. The judge heard the evidence, and they are in the best position to make these comments. I think we've still got to come back to this point. But Robert, Robert attempt, what I'd Dan, say is... Dan, I'm not saying that you're trying yeah. to excuse anything, but Certainly I not. do think it's really important that as politicians, we absolutely take great care before we start questioning individual cases and sentences. Uh, you, you know this and you respect, I know you respect the system, but I think when we start to make these sort of moral differentiations, we start to get into trouble. Nobody in this audience is saying that uh, threats to arson, threats to people's lives is any way other than the most serious and grave of crimes. Of course it is. But at the same time, we've got to trust our judicial system to look at the facts, be possessed of the facts, and to get to the right judgment. That's what the rule of law all about. That's what we all believe in this okay. room and beyond. That's what we've got to preserve. Yeah, but, but the law does provide for criminal activity in the way you're describing, Robert, and I just think this is a different thing. It needs revisiting because I do think many people passionately feel it is wrong out there in the country. Okay. I'm very surprised. Very surprised to hear that. Anaya, Anaya Falara and Iman. Um, yeah, I, I don't think um, they're really comparable, so I, I, don't, I won't make light for light. But in terms of the specifics of the Just Up Oil, actually the polling's quite mixed on this, that the public in general are quite supportive of the harsh sentences. And I think that we actually get into quite dangerous territory when we start to argue that, because we personally feel very strongly about a particular issue and we think that it's existential, that that means that we have the right to essentially impose it on everybody else, mm. where we prevent people from being able to you know, go to their particular workplaces or um, when they're going to an art gallery and, you know, attempting to destroy particular artworks to make our particular political point. And um, so I think that it's important to draw the line somewhere where we don't get into a situation where every time we're very sh we think very strongly about something, that means that everybody else must have their life prevented in order to get that um, issue at the top of the agenda. And just, again, specifically on your point, actually, I think there's quite broad consensus politically that climate change is a significant issue that needs urgent action. We may well end up talking about it. So I think that this idea that, um, you know, because that issue is really important, um, that means that in some senses what they're doing is okay. I think we're getting into quite dangerous territory. If you break the law, um, then the law, you should feel the full force of the law. And then that's a principle. And that's a principle, and that's a principle that, hap that should apply regardless of what your particular beliefs are. Okay, thank you all very much. And um, I want to remind you that if you have views on this, if you're listening at home, or indeed if you're here in the audience, then you can call any answers and you can let them know what those views are. 03700 100 444 is the number you need. You can also now WhatsApp us on that number, so you can call or WhatsApp 03700 100 444. And any answers is after this programme, any questions on Saturday lunchtime. Right, let's move on to our next, because we've got a lot of, of questions on this subject from our audience here in Falmouth, and it comes from Nia.